So you see, don't see the reflection. on yes start good afternoon everyone and welcome all to our celebration of justice it is certainly true that justice delayed is justice denied but today is proof that in this office justice has no expiration date and that is entirely due to the inspired leadership guidance and support of the two men to my left, District Attorney Bragg and Special Agent in Charge Arvello. Toward the end of World War II, one of the Nuremberg prosecutors walked into a newly liberated concentration camp searching for records, for evidence for the upcoming trials, and he was greeted by a former inmate who took him to a remote corner near the electrified fence, and that inmate dropped to his knees and began digging a hole with his bare hands. And at the bottom of the hole were a set of rags, and inside those rags were a group of SS identity cards. He came to his feet, he handed the prosecutor those identity cards, and the prosecutor inc incredulously looked at him and said, why? Why did you risk your life saving this evidence? to which he answered without hesitation, because I've been waiting for you. I respectfully submit that my boss, District Attorney of New York County, Alvin Bragg, is one of the people for whom Fritz Grunbaum has been waiting all these years, and it is my honor to introduce him. Sir. Good afternoon. Uh, that was the head of our antiquities trafficking unit. To those of you who do not know him, I think he's probably known to many in the room, uh, Matthew uh, Bogdanos, uh, to whom uh, I'm extraordinarily grateful. Uh, he's gracious to say those things about me, but 
as far as Danny, as we affectionately refer to the District Attorney of New York's office, he's the heartbeat of this work, uh, which uh, he's been doing for some time and doing at the very, very highest level. So I commend him uh, and thank him. It is an honor to be taking part in this incredibly important and meaningful ceremony. Uh, I want to uh, thank the judge, uh, Judge Timothy Ryef and David Frankel, the relatives of Fritz Grunbaum, um, not just for their presence today, but their dogged efforts um, to preserve his legacy, his honorable legacy, uh, and for using their platform, uh, not just to preserve his legacy, but to lift up others as they go. So thanks to all you do and to the entire family. Um, I know uh, Adia Bogdanos would want me not just to thank him, but also the entire antiquities unit. So uh, he's, his work stands above and apart, but it's done uh, in consultation and working with uh, an outstanding team. So I want to salute them. Uh, and then our federal partners, uh, none of this work would be possible without Homeland Security. And so to our SAC, our special agent in charge, we thank you uh, for all of the great work uh, on this matter. And in particular, I want to salute uh, Special Agent Megan Buckley uh, for her work. So I don't think it's an overstatement. I just want to put it very simply. Today is historic and groundbreaking. Um, we are returning um, these beautiful works, these drawings, to their rightful home, to their family. This incredible art collection was stolen by the Nazi regime. Mr. Grunbaum was one of a kind, a popular cabaret performer, writer, actor, and director in Austria during the interwar period. In addition to all of those descriptors, as I think you can see before you, he had an eye for beautiful art. An incredible depth and spirit reflected in his collection, which spanned uh, over hundreds of pieces. Uh, and I think we all know the history. Uh, after the Nazis invaded Austria, they coerced him and his wife to turn over his collection to the regime. In the more than 70 years since those pieces were ripped away from their rightful owners, they've passed literally around the globe. Uh, eventually, and fortunately for purposes of our work here, traveling through New York and Manhattan, uh, traveling to some of the most famous museums and collections in the world, including the Museum of Modern Art right here in Midtown Manhattan. Now, they're returning to where they belong, back to his family, where they always should have been. When he was murdered in a concentration camp in 1941, the world was robbed of an artist and a creator, an artist and creator who enriched everyone around him. We were robbed of someone who understood what beautiful our art is, uh, and the importance of sharing it with others. Uh, the lives of countless artists and performers like him were lost far too soon. I think ADA Bogdanas really captioned it well when he talked about justice delayed, not being justice denied. Um, and so we are here today far too long, but we are here today. Uh, uh, it's not lost on me uh, where we are on the calendar that our ceremony coincides with the Jewish High Holidays, uh, which is a time of reflection. Um, this ceremony has reminded me uh, that despite the horrors, the tragedy, the destruction uh, caused by the Nazis, it is never too late uh, to teach the world about incredible people like Mr. Grunbaum. Never too late. Justice may be delayed, but particularly here at Danny, it will never uh, be denied. Uh, and so, as I said, it really is my distinct privilege uh, and honor to be a part, a small part, uh, in honoring and remembering his legacy. Uh, and with that, 
I will turn it over to our incredible federal partner, uh, our special agent in charge. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. My name is Ivan Arvelo, and I have the privilege of being the special agent in charge for Homeland Security Investigations, New York. I am honored to be here today with my esteemed colleagues, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, guests of honors, to return the seven pieces of art that date back to before the Holocaust. The artworks were confiscated by the Nazi regime and smuggled into the United States before their, their eventual recovery. Over the years, HSI New York has played a critical role in returning countless stolen artifacts to their countries of origins, some dating back centuries, each holding immeasurable value for their respective cultures, every piece carrying a story deserving of admiration. However, occasionally, we encounter a case like the one we presented here today that compels us to pause and reflect. This artworks hold a history that cannot be ignored. They tell a tale of immense suffering endured by millions during the Holocaust. The seven artworks were crafted by Austrian expressionist artist Egon Scheidley and were acquired by Jewish art collector Fritz Grunbaum. Sadly, Mr. Grunbaum, Mr. Grunbaum's fate mirrored that of many Jewish victims of the era. As he and his wife Elizabeth met a tragic end at a Nazi concentration camp. Before her own passing, Elisa witnessed the Nazi confiscate the art collection as if it were her own. Three years before her death, she wrote of her husband's state proceedings, there is nothing left. Today, we can affirm with certainty that a part of the Chrome Band's legacy endures. While Fred and Elizabeth are not present to witness the artwork themselves, we are deeply honored to be able to reunite their descendants with this pieces of precious art. HSI New York remains committed to combating illicit trafficking of cultural property and safeguarding the world's historic, her historic heritage. We will continue to work with our partners at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, applying our unique authorities and expertise in an effort to facilitate the return of cultural treasures to the rightful owners. I want to recognize the diligent invest investigative and prosecutorial team responsible for the successful recovery of this historic, historically significant artworks. HSI Special Agent Megan Buckley, the Chief of, of the Antiquities Trafficking Unit, ADA Matthew Bogdanos, ADA Edward Smith, and Antiquities Trafficking Analyst Hillary Chase. It is their unwavering commitment and passion that ensures that looted cultural property always find its way back home. Thank you for your hard work and your dedication. Thank you. Ellie Wiesel said, I swore never to be silent whenever or wherever human beings endure suffering and humiliation. We must always take sides. District Attorney Bragg, Special Agent in Charge, Arvello, Colonel Bogdanos, thank you for taking the right side of history. Your accomplishments today are historic. The collaboration between your offices, led by Colonel Bogdanos, is unprecedented anywhere in this country or throughout the world. You have solved crimes perpetrated more than eight decades ago. Your recovery of these artworks reminds us once again that history's largest mass murder has too long concealed history's greatest robbery. Because you remember, you will be remembered. Your actions are as righteous as they are courageous. Mm -hmm. 
In January 1941, Fritz Grunbaum was murdered in the Dachau concentration camp. In 1942, his wife Elizabeth was deported to a Minsk death camp. Before their murders, the Nazis systematically robbed the Grunbaum's belongings, their household furnishings, their jewelry, their clothing, their home. Adolf Eichmann and Hermann Goering, two of history's most despicable war criminals, oversaw this systematic robbery. Eichmann and Goering perpetrated crimes against humanity, robbing and murdering defenseless individuals on an almost unimaginable scale. These Nazis systematically murdered most of the Grunbaum family relatives. Here's what Fritz wrote in a comedic monologue lamenting his lack of children. My word, it is truly bitter, you see, to die out completely like this, one, two, three. Imagine having been so fit and distinguished, you find your life from one day to the next quite extinguished. Nonetheless, I bid you please not to forget that the Grunbaum dynasty has life in it yet. Thank you, District Attorney Bragg and Sack Arvello. You have not forgotten. Today, our family asks those who are gathered here to remember all those who lost their lives in the Holocaust. We ask you to remember Fritz's career as a cabaret artist, librettist, comedian, film and radio star. We ask you to remember his generosity. When viewing these artworks, imagine Fritz and Elizabeth in their lively Vienna apartment, singing and dancing and cracking jokes, remembering their lives defeats Hitler's plan to erase this brave, Jewish man's name from the book of history. By recovering these long lost artworks, our law enforcement authorities have today achieved a measure of justice, a measure of justice for the victims of murder and robbery with excellence, with unfailing resolve, and with courage, you show the world that prosecutors and law enforcement working together can solve these crimes using modern forensic tools. You set the example that the world will follow. Mark my words. On behalf of my entire family, I offer our deep gratitude to each of you here today for all you are doing and have done as part of this investigation to advance the cause of justice. I also thank your hardworking colleagues who were not possible to be here in person today. I know that they are many and they have our thanks. Finally, we extend our heartfelt thanks to each of those persons and institutions who cooperated with law enforcement to secure the return of these works. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, just a few words on the works themselves. Egon Schiele was a Viennese expressionist artist who died at the age of 28 during the influenza epidemic of 1918. But before he did, he left the world an extraordinary legacy through his artworks, oil paintings, and especially his watercolor and pencil drawings, seven of which you see before you here today. We have the portrait of his wife, Edith, in pencil. We have the self-portrait um, in front of you on the tables. We have I Love Antithesis, the prostitute, seated woman, and portrait of a boy. 
Harold Reiner. The titles are actually the subject matter of the works because during his lifetime, Egon Schiele never, rarely, with rare exceptions, titled his watercolor and pencil drawings. But the beauty of each of them, I respectfully submit to all of you, shines through over the decades. And it is yet another reason we are indebted to Fritz Grunbaum for saving what Joseph Goebbels called and Hitler called degenerate art. By all accounts, these should have been under that program destroyed. And we are thankful that they were not. So that, that, that concludes our ceremony. I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, give us a moment. We're going to take uh, some, some photos with the family and the investigative team, uh, and then we invite uh, everyone who wants to observe uh, and take in the art more closely to, to come forward. Yes, and I, I would like uh, my team up here, please, to get the recognition you deserve. Because we all know I don't do anything. We do everything. <laughs>